What's up, YouTubers? I'm MardonX9, and I'm just an average Joe here to talk about gaming. Tonight, I'm taking you down memory lane as we go back to April 2002. Now, during that time, I was getting ready for a lot of things. I was finishing off my high school junior year, starting my high school senior year. And during that time, I had a lot on my plate. Graduation, video games. College, and video games. Girls, and video games. Oh, did I also mention video games? Little did I know that my video game void was about to be filled, as was millions of other gamers. And it was all gonna be just a click away. April 24th, 2002 was the day that G4 debuted. G4 was a cable channel that was devoted completely to video games. So how devoted to video games were they? They had a show for different genres of video gaming. I kid you not. For those in the role-playing crowd, you had Portal. For multiplayers, you had Arena. For action adventure, you had Blister. If you had top tens that you liked, you had Filter. Wanted to know all the tips and tricks, you had Cheat. And for the retro runners like myself, there was a classic arcade game show called Starcade, which hadn't been seen since 1984, one year before I was born. It was an actual game show where you played video games for prizes. This was before Video Power or Nick Arcade. And it was amazing. I saw that show, tried to see every episode I could. It also inspired me to do my own video game show with my high school cable network. Okay, that was too much information. This will not be repeated. Everything was going great. And then in 2004, G4 decided to merge with Tech TV, which was a network centered on computer and technology. And with that merger came G4 Tech TV which later dropped the Tech TV and went back to G4 a year later. G4 acquired a lot of programs from Tech TV, including its own video game review show, X-Play, AKA GameSpot TV, AKA Extended Play. And it had become the flagship show of G4 ever since, along with another popular show called The Screensavers, which was revamped and is known today as Attack of the Show. However, as the years went by, G4 began to lose its luster and it began slowly declining into not being a channel for video gamers, but more for young adults as it was trying to compete against channels like Spike TV. As such, all the shows I told you about earlier, they all got the boot, leaving only X-Play and Attack of the Show. X-Play being the only show so far centered on video gaming, where Attack of the Show did its own thing. It was DirecTV's decision to leave G4 out of its subscriber list that would later become the downfall of G4. It would get to the point where all of its original programming would start getting cut back, losing cast members, losing staff, not doing original episodes. Pretty much the network had to resort to cops and cheaters just to fill in the time slots and try to get revenue. But once that didn't work, we all know what happens. G4 would later cease to exist on December 31st, 2014. It's kind of ironic though. You leave one day before 2015, which is like saying you're not gonna make it for the new year. Now normally this would be the end of this little history lesson. That is until we come to 2020. Well, actually a couple months within 2020. On July 24, 2020, San Diego Comic-Con decided to go digital thanks to you know what. However, one of the biggest takes we got from the Comic-Con was this trailer. That's right, G4 announced that it was going to return in 2021. Pretty soon, we started getting news about G4 right off the bat. X-Play and Attack of the Show's Twitter feed has been reactivated, showing new content, showing things like G4 needs talent, where they're trying to get people who are already real good video game talent to try and join G4. They even did a holiday reunion special this November. Pretty good one, by the way. And now we find out that Xavier Woods, a WWE superstar, is going to be a G4 host. The guy is a gamer. 
Trust me, he is a gamer. So now we come to the big question. Can G4, a television network, compete against the social media monsters that are Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook gaming? I can't say it's not going to be easy, but it might not be hard as you think. Because in my opinion, there is practically only three things G4 needs to do. Number one is demographics. The website already states that it's going to be about video games and pop culture. Now if they said it, they gotta stick to it. And you can't just go and focus on the ride or die crew that has been with you since 2002. I'm talking about us old timers in case you're wondering. You now have to center on a new generation that can do what you do with just the click of a mouse. Number two, content. Try to make it as fresh as you can. And I wouldn't mind if they went back to an old playbook back in 2002, which was to make a show for different genres. Give us a show about role playing. Give us a show about action adventure. Give us a show about multiplayer. Do a show about esports or Pokemon. One of the things I liked about G4 was the fact that it was so diverse when it came to the genres of video games. If it wasn't for G4, I wouldn't have known about MMOs or RPGs. I mean, seriously, if you're looking into finding new types of genres, they had a show where it made you look, made you explore. It just made you enjoy looking at all aspects of gaming. Hopefully with this new talent search, G4 will probably provide us with new hosts who have like a diverse range of gaming, which will allow us to have new shows that would probably be beneficial to everybody in different forms of genres. Last but not least is number three, accessibility. G4 can't be just on the telly anymore. After all, we can watch TV now on our computers, on our Switch, and of course, on our phones. I show you my phone, but unfortunately I'm using it as a camera right now. G4's website also said that it was gonna be a digital first media. That means that not only is it gonna be centered on cable TV, but it's also going to center on online. The question is, how are they gonna center online? They may have to get a little leg up from the very people they're competing with, like Twitch or YouTube and Facebook. But I can also see them using Discord. Discord has been so good at forming communities so that they can talk to each other and look at other things and check out content that they need. I'm pretty sure G4 can utilize Discord in some way, but it still doesn't change the fact that G4 needs to be a little bit bigger than Twitch. Not exactly bigger, it's just got to do something that Twitch and YouTube and Facebook has never even thought of, or more or less haven't even got to yet. But even that is asking a lot. Basically, its best thing to do is just give us a reason to watch. Give us something that makes us want to watch G4 again. That's basically it. I loved G4 back in 2002, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it revives itself today. I mean, G4 practically showed me a lot about video gaming that I didn't even know about back in 2002. And I'm hoping that today, it can do it again. Now that I put my two cents in, I'm passing the baton to the viewers. What do you think? Do you think G4 can still survive in this day and age? Or do you think it ran its course back in 2002? Please let me know what you think. Post on my Twitter page at MardonX9 or post down below on the comments. And don't forget to check out my Twitch streams. I stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and don't give up.